Good evening, everybody. My name is Jen Summers. For those of I, you I don't know, I am the director of the Houston Ballet Academy. And on behalf of Stanton Welch, our artistic director, I'd like to welcome you to the Margaret Alkeck Williams Dance Lab and our final dance talk of the 2022-2023 season. Um, yeah, I can't believe we're here already, but we are. Um, I have really been looking forward to this one since um, Stanton announced which ballets we were gonna do this season because I knew immediately that I wanted to invite the OG, Odette Odile, to the stage. And I did have to persuade her a little bit uh, because she does have a life um, outside of Houston Ballet these days. But I'm thrilled uh, to introduce to you, for those of you who don't know her, although I think most of you do, um, I think her name officially is Murray, but we all know her as Mimi Hassan Bowler. Um, yes, please give her a Mimi's from New Orleans, Louisiana, and she joined Houston Ballet in 1992 during Ben Stevenson's tenure as our director. She was promoted to principal dancer in 2000, and she retired from the stage in 2013. Um, and she, as I said, she originated the role of Odette Odile in Stanton's version. So we're thrilled that she's here to give us some secrets and some backstory. Uh, we'll see what, what she has to say. Um, and then, to my left and to Mimi's right um, is our, our, somebody who's very new to the Dance Talks uh, format and to you. Um, Beck Ann Sisk joined Houston Ballet just one year ago, essentially. Um, this is her first year as a principal dancer. This is her first ballet talk. Um, she joined us from, uh, after having a, a beautiful career at Ballet West from 2010 to 2022. Um, she joined us as a principal dancer and she will be um, dancing Odette Odile next week, but she d has already danced it, we just haven't seen it. Because she did travel with the company and dance Odette Odile when the company toured to Tokyo in October. So welcome to Beck Ann. <laughs> I do think it's fitting as we're closing out, the end of 2022-2023 season is officially, we will finish Stanton's 20th year as our artistic director, and as most of you know, we will be celebrating all those 20 years throughout the season next year. And I think it's fitting that we're sort of launching into that celebration with the very first classical ballet that he created here at Houston Ballet. He had another full length, Klein Time, but that was more of a contemporary ballet. This was the first real, um, uh, I guess, classical ballet from the canon that he created here at Houston Ballet with the support of Margaret Al Alkeck Williams, who was the underwriter for that production, with uh, set and costume de designs by Christian Fredrickson and lighting design by Lisa Pinkham. Um, it is a spectacular production that we have not seen on the Wortham since 2014, because of course, uh, Swan Lake was part of our illustrious hometown tour uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. So it's gonna be returned to its original glory it might be being returned there now. I think the crew's over there, um, but we're really excited for that to happen. Okay, let's dive in. Um, so for both of you, uh, Stanton refers to Swan Lake and specifically the Odette Odile roles as the Mount Everest um, for female ballet dancers. And I just thought maybe, Mimi, you could start, do you agree or disagree? And if so, why or why not? It's also said it's the king. Um, as far as Mount Everest, it, it is a work um, that requires a lot of, <laughs> of rehearsal time, <laughs> a lot of physicality, a lot of um, years of training, you know, staying in the core as a, as a swan to get to this point where you can be an Odette Odile. So it, it is that journey that you take as a dancer that you, that you aspire to do. It's that white tutu ballet that you visualize in your head as a young ballerina, that you want to use your arms and as swan wings to escape uh, gravity. Um, so it is one in which you have to build to get there. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it doesn't, you can't just turn it on a dime, come in one week and then put on a full length production of Swan Lake. It requires you to be in shape <laughs> for act one, act two, act three, for the whole, it, it's a journey that you take as the, as the Odette Odile character. But the funny thing is that um, when we 
they do ballets like full day classical ballets, they only come around maybe every four years. And as you can see, this one hasn't been around since 2014. No. 2018, 2018 we were at Jones. At yeah. Hobby, right? So as a dancer, you only get maybe a handful of performances that you do within your career. So I've probably done six performances as of, of Odette Odile. So it is climbing Mount Everest in that you maybe do it once really, really well. <laughs> I agree. It is um, something about the ballet is I do feel like you, there's ups and downs. Like in Stanton's version, we start with the maiden paw, which is, I feel like, a really nice way of easing into the ballet, because in other versions, your first entrance is the soda shaw with like the balance and arabesque, and that coming out with that, I feel like, is really daunting. So it's nice in his version to get to come out and kind of start off easy and get your bearings on the stage. So we have been calling it Odette Odile. Um, she's, she, you, in most ballets, you get to you sort of play a character that has one narrative arc throughout the course of the three hours of the evening. But this one, certainly, like this is multiple characters with things, multiple personalities going on. I wonder about, um, the, the the complexity or the challenge of playing two different characters and then also for each of you, is there one, since there's such polar opposites, that you identify with more and that another one that's more challenging for you? And Becky, do you want to start this time? The more I thought about this, because we always say Odette Odile, and I was like, in Stanton's version, I feel like there's three characters. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, not only do we have to tackle Odette, who is the, you know, damsel in distress, swan, um, but you also have Odile, who's a completely different character, um, just like looking in the mirror, but the complete opposite version of Odette. But then you also have Odette as a maiden, and so you have to think of how she would be as a human being, and I found that, I find that really enjoyable to play. I almost think of her as like a Juliet in a way, she kind of has those similar qualities. Um, but to say my favorite, that's hard to say. And I honestly, I feel like with every run, I have a different favorite part of the ballet, even in character. Um, but can you describe a little for you um, the, you know, get a few adjectives that you said damsel in distress for Odile? Can you, like, what would you, I'm sorry, you said that for Odette. What would you say Odile is, in your opinion? Confident, um, feisty, um, just, I almost think of Odette as, she's not a human. She's not, like, um, there's not much back to her. She's just there to do destruction. So I just see her as the villain, and there's not much depth to her other than just destruct, is sort of how I look at her. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I looked at both of those roles. Um, I'm a Gemini, so I, I live in two worlds. I'm always <laughs> talking to myself. So I always thought Odile um, as two different characters, and Odette as two different characters as the same person though. Um, so, wait a minute, Here, let me go back up. Odette, I felt like had a complexity to her. She comes in on a boat. Where is she coming from? It's like one of the things you, you look at as characterizations is how did they get here in this moment? And I remember talking with Barbara and a few other dancers that at the time that Stanton was creating it, we really tried to dig into, well, who is Odette? You know, is she this innocent? Is she that innocent? And um, we kind of came up with the idea, so I'll share it with you, because we're not in the same era, believe it or not, right? We're not in the same <laughs> era as dan of dancers. We don't get to collaborate like that, right? Um, we thought maybe she had a terrible, traumatic uh, family, or she's escaping something that happened, and she's off adrift on this boat um, in, in search of maybe safety or maybe even mystery. And then um, comes, 
face to face with Rothbard that changes the course of her life, right? Um, so that was kind of the maiden form of Odette. And then the swan version is, in Stanton's version, um, the prince meets the maiden. And so that changes the dynamic of how Odette comes on as a swan. Um, so there's already this um, relationship that is formed between the two of them before she becomes a swan. And as a swan, she's just, I, I feel em not embarrassed, but ashamed that she's maybe this, for lack of a better term, ogre, like Shrek. <laughs> like she's this other being that she wasn't when she first met him. So we take do on you, that. Do you think that gives her, so just to give a clarity, just if, if anybody here hasn't seen Stanton's version, both Becky Ann and Mimi have been talking about what makes Stanton's version different is in a, in a, in a, a more traditional version of Swan Lake, you only see the lead female dancer in swan form. And in, in uh, Stanton's version, we first meet her, she's a maiden. Um, and so that there's the human connection between a girl and Prince Siegfried, or a woman and Prince Siegfried. So there's an established relationship, which is what Mimi is referring to. They're already in love with each other, whereas in many versions, he somehow falls in love with the bird. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, right, I mean, he, so that's an interesting, I wonder, Becky, if you have any response to the, this idea of a little bit of, um, in a different version, that's how they meet, and he falls in love with the bird, and now all of a sudden, in Stanton's version, she's, wait, I'm, I'm a bird. I mean. <laughs> that's something I love about Stanton's version, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, it makes sense. Like, this makes so much more sense to me. Um, because Siegfried's, you know, in the forest, is he's supposed to be getting married, supposed to choose a princess, and he's taken some time away alone. And that's when we see um, Odette as the maiden walking through the forest, and they run into each other. They have a beautiful pas de deux just kind of getting to know, and he's like, run away with me, let's go. Um, invites her to the party for act two. She can't go, of course. She shows up, but um, I... I just love and I feel like it makes so much more sense. It really makes the story come together, him seeing her as a maiden, and then whenever he sees her as a swan, he's more understanding and he's like, oh, you know, I love her. You, you understand more why he loves her in swan form as well. And do you think um, the Siegfrieds, I mean, we don't have one here tonight, but do you think the Siegfrieds feel that way too, that they, that they can love the swan more because they met her as a human or as human yeah, I'd, I'd hope so <laughs> <laughs> I think so um, I don't remember what and I danced with Andrew Murphy um, I don't remember what his thought process was we ne we didn't compare notes that way but I'm sure it was probably better for him <laughs> I guess it, it allows you to um, whereas with a regular swan lake as an audience member you have to suspend your disbelief that a man would be in love with a swan. Here we're really clear that he's in love with a woman who happens to take a, the form of a swan at night because she's under a spell. Um, still a little disbelief, but at least we, we get it a little bit more. So, so basically, I think Mimi said four, uh, there's four different characters because they, ha they each have to play Odette as a maiden, Odette as a swan, Odile as a maiden, Odile as a swan. How do you make those First of all, I understand that in Act One, the costume change situation is pretty crazy. It's nuts. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit over. <laughs> like I was like, really? You want me to do what? <laughs> um, it, they, they actually lend itself to it, though. Costumes really are part of your character. They, if it's a flowy gown, you kind of know how to walk or how to feel in it. Or if it's a tutu, you know you have to walk a different way. So it lends itself um, fourfold. So you have the, the two maidens with long dresses and then the, the two swans are in tutu, short tutu. Um, and, and he choreographed it so that there's some light motifs that kind of go through that you, you can kind of anchor in some characters. But really it's the music that helps you with that um, characterization, I felt like. I mean, the strings, those swans, I mean, they just, 
or bleeding heart, right? <laughs> Uh, and then bum bum bum, but the, the black swan is just so in your face and she's seductive and she's winning him over every single glance of her eye. She's just beguiling, right? Um, and there's very little that she does as the maiden Odile. There's just like maybe the, right, uh, there's a quick change at the end of white into the, and then, you, then there's a double who does the, in Act Three, oh, pardon me, <laughs> I gave it away. <laughs> it's not her. <laughs> that quick change is, I don't know if you remember how long it was. I want to say it's like 30 seconds to get out of this tutu, a wig on, another long dress on, and be out. It's have, like, sometimes the wig is like on you, <laughs> and your costume's not completely done. So you just kind of angle yourself I think, nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the hardest part for me was the, um, keeping character in the wing while you're, that's happening to you or cha changing your frame of mind of what's happening next when you're being torn into different pieces, right? I or guess that's, that was like part of my question is you have to seamlessly get from one character to the next. And I hear you saying the costume helps and the music helps. I mean, what are the other, like, how do you transform yeah, again, because in a regular, in a normal story, you're one person who's going through things and evolving, but you're ping-ponging a little bit here. How do you make those switches? I really like what you said, music. You hear the music, you become the music. And so I feel like it's pretty easy. Like, it feels right every time you go on as the different character. lends to that. I mean, Stanton did a good job. I, I really, I enjoyed um, the maiden part in Odette to have that narrative. Like you said, it's not the first time that you come out and do, put on a character. You actually kind of ease into, not usually does Stanton do that. Usually he just like throws you out there. You already have to have your character and go. <laughs> but the maiden actually gives you a little bit of time to feel the weight to feel that you're human so that you can take flight as the swan. I feel like his choreography really helped um, cre create the, the part that you can do the opposite to, right? To start, the Odette is the start and then you can go flip. And then what, is that, um, what does Odile have to do to get him? You know, what is she? And you mean, you've been referencing, I mean, the adjectives that Becky Ann um, told us about Odile versus Odette. It's, you know, the rhythm's an enormous stage. I feel like with the black swan, you can go out and sort of be flashy and out, out to us in a way. Um, whereas there's an intimacy to Odette and Siegfried's paw. Do you want to talk a little about that? Yeah, um, actually, I remember it was something I struggled with when Stanton was choreographing because I couldn't figure it out at first, but act, um, Odette is very insular. We, we never bow to the audience. It's always bowing to each other. Um, in other versions I've done, other, another version I've done, um, we came to the audience to bow after White Swan potted up. And that doesn't happen in Stanton's. He's keeping the pace going, which is a little bit harder, because <laughs> you don't get to recover as quickly. Um, but these dancers can do that now. <laughs> so he pushes them. Um, and in Odette, um, it is the opposite. You mean Odile? Oh, sorry, yes, the other one, the black, the black, the black song. Um, that's very much to the audience. And so I, it took me a while to figure out, oh, that's what he's doing, oh. <laughs> And so once you can kind of figure out which parts are more intimate, as Odette is, and the relationship and then the opposite, and maybe this is how we can help characterize the Odile and Odette, is Odette then is to the audience, and there's no one else on stage when they're doing their pas de deux. It is just the prince, Odile, and the audience, right? So you're very much invited to be part of that, whereas in act one, we're calling it act one? What are we calling it? Because sometimes act one, we call it act one, uh, Odette, um, you're invited just to be the spectator, to view what's happening. Um, you're not invited to participate necessarily. 
And I think the set plays into that too for uh, Odile with those big flames coming up. It's loud, <laughs> right? But it's quiet on stage because there's no one else there but you and the prince and the audience, right? Do you feel that way? Yes, I, in the other Swan Lake version I did, everyone, you're at the party, and that's when you do the black swan pas de deux, and so you get to play off of everyone, and that's something that helped me like take myself out and not realize how exhausted I was. So now that it's just us on stage, you don't have other people to look at to kind of like help get you through it, <laughs> so it's just you. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> I was like, can you help me? <laughs> I need your energy, kill me. <laughs> but but uh, Mimi, I mean, Becca, do you feel like Mimi does wear that it's actually all of them that are the party attendants or something? Oh yeah, um, and I love that, I had not thought about us not bowing to the audience in act one. That is, huh. I got my story, you wanna hear it? Yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> so in my infinite wisdom, I thought, in the rehearsal process. It's like, well, you know, I have an entrance over here, Stanton. Should I exit that way? Like, I can bow on this side of the prince and just Odette. And he, and he just looked at me and he goes, no. I might want to change it. I might want to have you bore out. I might want to have you. I went, okay. <laughs> Stepping backwards. I'm like, don't interrupt a choreographer while they're choreographing. <laughs> That's not the time to ask him questions. And then later he went back and gave corrections to, it was a run through. And he came back and he goes, you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna bore off. He goes, you don't bore off anymore, do you? He made me bore off. Which, he put which? me in my place. He made me bore <laughs> off stage right. After what? After act one pa. Uh, you bore? Yes. <laughs> no, we don't do that. <laughs> we tweaked a little bit. That was a Mimi special. Matt, he was mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, is that when he put in the entrance to the variation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think in his head, he knew, he knew what he wanted. And I was interrupting that moment <laughs> where he was going to tell me what we were going to do. And then later, he said, you're going to come flying in from the wing and then take this very quiet walk to the center and start your solo. That is one of the most difficult parts. I agree. <laughs> Definitely. So can you give us a little more um, description of that? So this is in Act One. They've completed the pas de deux. And, what's, and I think this is an interesting point because the, all the uh, sort of Russian classical era ballets were very much about the, the court in which they were created. And so you were very much acknowledging your partner, but also the royalty in the box. And we take that, you see that in the classical ballets where the story is continuing, but all of a sudden the dancers are acknowledging us as audience members, almost breaking that um, fourth wall. Uh, but I think that is a really interesting thing. That's, it's gonna help pull the audience into the intimacy of Odette, Odette, no, Odette and Siegfried in act one if you don't acknowledge their presence, if you just keep it about the two of you and the like. And then what, so you're saying then in the, in the variation, in that pas de deux. Uh, yeah, that's what he. That's what his vision was. You, I don't know, has he told you this? You were supposed to fly in from the wing, <laughs> like you've landed onto stage, like a bird. You know, like a, you see birds. You know, they, they fly and they land, and they're ever so quiet. You know, and it's quiet. <laughs> it's very quiet, but you hear yourself breathing. It's like one of those things. Your heart's pounding. Um, to make just a little semicircle to the uh, to the middle stage for your solo, which is a very difficult solo. It's not an easy one. It takes lots of control. Um, it has some. It is in the classical tradition, so he didn't deviate too much from that. I mean, you have some arms, some wings that you can use of your own interpretation, but um, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward ballet technique. Um, so that moment is really tricky. Just the silent walk? Mm -hmm. Because it's also, he wants it to be very long, to not rush, to not run, like to take your time. And you have, I think he wants us to pause at least twice during our walk around the pond before we get to start on center for our variation. So it's just, it's effective. It is, yeah. 
That's interesting. That it's like that. That's what a bird would do. They would. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and that's another way in which you were saying earlier that the choreography itself helps you distinguish when you're the bird and when you're the person. Yeah. Um, anything else about that dichotomy, the maiden swan roles that you want to bring to our attention? I mean, you dance them differently. I heard one of you say, you know, just feeling the weight of being a human. What can you, a little bit more about how you approach the, the humans versus the birds? More. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have different physicalities, as you're as you're saying. Like a, a human would probably rush to the center of the stage and take and take it, whereas a bird is gonna like see some bugs and worms and you know. I think it's it's wings, um, human arms versus wings, and I think when you think of when when I thought of Swan Lake, one of the first things I started exploring uh, was what does a wing look like? How has it feel, how, and, and the, when you fly in, what kind of pressure do you need for your wings to land or to take off? Like, that's kind of, that's quintessential Swan Lake. How, how, where does it come from? Where is the wing initiated? Is it your back? Is it your elbow? Is it, is it the neck? You know, where does it come from? Um, and I think that distinguishes bird. <laughs> That and maybe feet too, like what you do with your, how you articulate certain, when you're more of a maiden, you're more pedestrian, you, you would be more flat, maybe walking, but as the bird, you're going to have to have some claws, right? <laughs> so I think that that would be differentiate the quality in which you move. Yeah, it's like as Odette, as the bird, as the swan, I think about more of my arms, and I'm in all the pantomime. We're in tendu, be plus, you know. Whereas as maiden, we're in you know parallel, a little bevel, demi point, and you don't have to think about your arm, like your wings being extended at all times. Maybe just a hint of it, like you, you give the idea when you're a maiden that you are still a swan. So it's just ever so slight that you think. It wouldn't be just, you know, pedestrian arm. You'd still have some wing aspect to it, but it's not not like a formal ballet walk or it has just the an impression of, of a bird as as the maiden even. So that even as she turns at dawn or whatever turns back into being a maiden, the the having been a bird is still with her, kind of. Exactly. Wow. There's a lot to look at. When we go, um, so I know that the the the, the wings that you're discussing um, is very that that's that's very specific to Swan Lake, a and we've discussed what a we've both said how difficult it is to to you know just sort of physically to do this ballet. What what a how do you prepare if you know it's going to be in the season? How do you prepare for it? I mean, not, not just as the characters, but just sort of physically to, you know, to, to be ready to tackle it and be all those things. You're much more, you're much more ready for it than I am right now. <laughs> for me, it's repetition. Um, that's, I feel like everyone is a little different. And some people just need to think and like go through it mentally. But for me, it's repetition and doing it over and over. That's when I find little nuances of my own is the more I do it, the more I can find myself in it and kind of have my own ideas. I, I, I mean, 32 fortes, that's a, that takes a lot of um, last of class, whipping out 64, <laughs> just to get 32 on stage after a full ballet, right? That's. That's a tour de force, so physically getting that left leg, calf, and a lot of ice. <laughs> um, I think class prepares you, right? We have a really good staff here, so we have an hour and 15 class that prepares you. Um, watching other dancers, watching videos. I remember when I first did it, we didn't have social media. 
So I, I remember making a trip to New York to the library to go check out videos of other ballerinas that have done the role of Odette Odile and just trying to form an opinion of what, what might, might look good on me. Like, I, I'm, I'm a tall dancer, you're a tall dancer. It's very different when you're a taller dancer as, a, as opposed to a smaller dancer. What kind of physicality is required? <laughs> um, so those kind of preparations. And even as a court of ballet member, you're staying on the side, um, what feels like an eternity on one foot, throbbing. That's preparation right there in itself. Um, years of that, you know, you are not just the core, you are um, an appendage of Odette. Um, so as you're honing that skill, standing on the side, you're actually preparing yourself to be the lead. Um, you have to think of it that, I, th I think I thought of it that way when I was a young dancer. I remember Ben saying that actually. He's like, you, you know, just don't stand, or you're not just sort of standing around the side. You are her. You're a part of her. You you make a what's that show that with the viruses not virus fungus where they feel each other. It's kind of like that. What's that new thing that's out? It's kind of like that. They're they're all one. They're all connected. Yes, The Last of Us. It's kind of like that. It's grotesque, but but in a beautiful way. You kind of all together. Like it ha it has that unity feel to it. So you're already preparing in the core to be Odette. But is there any, um, I mean, I hear you saying fuetes, you know, just knowing the actual steps, but you know, you, you had the chance, I guess, to do it in October, so you did really start getting ready for the June performances a while back, but how do you keep it, um, you know, with all the other things that you do, how do you, how do you stay ready, I guess? And you were so new, really, to the company when, and to this version when you took it to Tokyo. Um, what's nice here with our rehearsal schedule is they see, oh, Sisk isn't in this rehearsal. Let's give her an hour of Swan Lake throughout the whole season. So it's like throughout the entire season in Nutcracker, if I had an hour off, they would, you know, have a private of Swan Lake for me. So I've been touching it, you know, throughout the season. And it needs that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just back to first question, the Mount Everest question, yeah, it needs that constant tending and careful attention. Yeah. So we've talked about the maiden being something that makes um, Stanton's version unique, um, the maiden element. Um, are there other things um, that, that make his version different and unique? Oh, definitely, the men. The men get to dance. <gasps> Used to be the men would have fun and, and we, we would be sweating buckets, you know, putting our feet in ice, and the guys are like, hey, let's go out tonight and party. And we're like, what? <laughs> but this version, they danced. So they're putting their feet in buckets and <laughs> getting home, getting to bed, which is good. It's leveling. <laughs> That's a difference. Uh, there's a difference. Well, okay. I was going to say just the princesses and their ambassadors also each have a dance and act too as well, which is just more dancing for everybody in this version, it's a lot. Rather than just the, the swans being the bulk of it. Yeah. What about um, Rothbart? I know that um, I feel like he's sometimes just somebody who uh, menaces from the corner, um, but he has a, he, he's really a significant role in this one. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your both Odette and Odile's relationship to him and, and how that works choreographically and with acting. He's frightening. Well, obviously he's just frightening. <laughs> but he has to, uh, physically, he has to do a lot of lifting. He does some really hard um, presses. A lot of, a lot, a lot. <laughs> I feel formed like I'm trying, dude. <laughs> we do harder as partnering as like with him, I feel, than Siegfried. He, he does quite a bit of heavy lifting. Um, and in, in, act, in act three, the Odile pas de deux, he does have quite a bit of, um, ha, I guess he brings back a little bit of that pas de trois that it was maybe originally. There was um, Rothbart, Odile, and Siegfried, uh, more of a pas de trois. So you have a little bit more of that feel. So 
So he's not just the you know the dark figure in the corner. Would you say that um, that the dancing with him is harder, or was harder for him? There's just some lifts that we do with Rothbar in Act Three that are some of the most difficult lifts I have ever done in a ballet. And it's at the end of the ballet that we have to run out and do it with Rothbard. And he has this massive, you know, like head on and wings, and it's just some very difficult partnering. Uh, both of you, but maybe Mimi, because you were there when he created it. What did what did he's sort of connected to the dragon, right? Rothbard. And what do you what can you share with us about that? I wish I could. <laughs> I don't really remember. Um, I, I remember Fredrickson, the, the dragon at the end. I, somehow they're connected. I, I, I don't really, I didn't, I didn't pull from that from my character. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Nick Leschke, but he was so great at it. He was just this um, yeah. otherworldly stud. Yeah, <laughs> stud. Yeah. Thank you. I'll say, yeah, stud. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, um, intriguing, right? To, I, I think for the very beginning, to see someone like that as, as Odette uh, is, is quite shocking and alluring, especially if she's fleeing something from home and trying to go for an adventure somewhere else. <laughs> but then, you know, the world changes. I did hear um, from Chris Coomer, who is a Rothbart, was a Rothbart, um, that Stanton had, he kind of had sort of changed his mind or just come up with more ideas with the dragon, the different times that the ballet has been performed. I think he kind of comes up with different ideas like Rothbart, like he's decaying and Rothbart is feeding off of the decay and that's how Rothbart became Rothbart. Like there's lots of different ideas, but I think that the Rothbards right now are just sort of interpreting it in their own way. I mean, I've also heard Stanton talk about um, Rothbard and the dragon more representing sort of the environment and that the humans are encroaching and that kind of thing, which I thought was... I wonder if that evolved. I, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's apt right now, for sure. I think it's perfect, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, That's the beauty about our craft, right? You, yeah. He gets to play with it a little bit, and he has changed. He changed yeah, exactly. Ending. He changed the ending. So uh, we were chatting by email about this. Um, out of necessity, uh, when we did the, because you know, this Jones, is, Jones stage is very different than the Wortham, and this production was built for the Wortham, Stanton made an, a change to the ending, and I'll let Mimi describe it, that has sustained, actually, so that even though we're going, we took it to various places since being back at the Wortham, it's keeping the change. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the, the first time he originally thought of it, um, Odette, the maiden, gets in the line of fire between Siegfried and killing Rothbart, and she is then killed with his own arrow. Like, so that's how she dies. Um, but in this version, in the, in the later reiteration, you might want to describe that one better. <laughs> we jump off the dragon, which is the latest. Which is just as fun. Dying is yeah. fun. Yeah. However yeah, how you die, die, dying is just so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, especially when you're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so in the original involuntary manslaughter and the current version, love suicide. Okay. Got it. Now we know it. Yeah. How does Rothbart die in this version? In the, in the does he get engulfed with the water? No. no, not anymore. Okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think um, we don't have Stanton here to ask, him, but I will after this. Is, but why? Why keep that change? And, and ask him this because we were maidens at the end. Yes. And in the end, now they're swans. Right. And I thought, I, I was a maiden and the girls were still swans, but then they had a quick change for the very end where they've become human, right? And now this version, they remain swans. When did you change back into a maiden? Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was super fast. 
after, um, so the lid, yeah. da, 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 all that still swung, and then you go off. Um, you don't no, stay. Bore, bore off, uh -huh, you change. Mm -hmm. More bores. And then drum roll come back uh -huh. on still? That, that okay. was Maiden. Wow. <laughs> we'll have to find out. I mean, it's very powerful, I think, the current version, because you have a full flock there <laughs> of, of swans. Yeah. Uh, maybe it harkens forward to Sylvia with the triangle of swan, strong women. Um, could any, anything else from the beginning of, or in the, from the, not from the beginning, just from the creation process, Mimi, that you recall that would be like little nuggets for us to know from inside of? Stanton's creative head. Yeah, you're talking a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, 10 years and ago for me to even don tights and pink coffins, so I can't even remember. Um, I went back in my notes, because you, when you asked, I was like, oh, let me revisit this. this that was a really special time. Um, I, I, you know, I remember early, like even before Stanton was director, one of the things that the search committee was very excited about when we were looking for a new director was that we could find a new Swan Lake. Um, and I remember that distinctly going, oh wow, what would that be like? Um, and the first thing that Stanton came up once he became a uh, director, he immediately had that version, right? Um, was introducing the, the males to have such a, uh, they would be the, um, the yin yang. So, Act one would be the male, act two, the women. Act three would have more, and then act four would be the women. So it, it really, he weighted it so that um, it did level the playing field a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I just can't remember, the, the creation process was really cool. I, I, I really, I didn't get to do that kind of, a lot of that stuff, so to have Swan Lake be the one that you get to, that's pretty cool. I was really, I was really um, fortunate to have that experience with him, and that type of relationship with him. Um, yeah, it's something special to be, have something created on you, or it was you in mind. Let's put it that way, because <laughs> it's going to last longer than just you, right? It's got to last uh, a lifetime of the work. Um, but it's fun to see some things that were nuanced, um, that were maybe something I, I, I did well, that he actually put in, because I did well, <laughs> not something I did bad, <laughs> so that I would have to work on, because he would do that too. He would put things in ballets that, oh, wait, you need to work on this. I'm going to put that in there for you to work on that. Um, so it was nice to have things that were actually looked good on you, and you felt good doing, so. Um, I mean, you have an imprint yeah, it, yeah, on the that, ballet as it moves forward, and like, if you're the person that was created on, you were part of the process, and you imprinted. Yeah, but it's so, so much fun to see someone else's interpretation of that very, um, with the same steps, maybe different musicality, they nuanced it a different way, and I was like, oh man, I wish I would have done that, <laughs> or had that idea. And I think that collaboration's important, you know, it's not just that it's set on you, but when you go off in the, you know, in the studio, when you start talking to other dancers that are doing the same role, like, we would say, okay, what is this character? Where does she come from? Those kinds of things are really cool. It's, it's a work being created right then and there. Even though it's such an, a dinosaur, <laughs> I mean, it, this is a museum piece. Swan Lake is, is a museum piece, and it needs to be in, in companies because it still challenges dancers today in more ways, but then he's added another layer, like boring off stage, or walking off very slowly. I mean, those things are really, He's pushing the envelope even more. I mean, you wouldn't think that would be, but that is. And 32 Boites is one thing, but having that range as a dancer is um, expected now. It, you know, I think back way back when, when these ballets were, you were a ballet dancer, and that was it. You didn't have the depth that dancers have now, where they have to be contemporary dancers, modern dancers, ballet dancers. And, and to visit the kind of work like Swan Lake is, is is pivotal, and it, I think it really, it shapes the dancers that dance it. Can you each share when you first, it, it doesn't have to be, I mean, I know when you each did Stanton's for the first time, uh, but when did you first dance? I guess you can tell, tell us both Swan Lake and Odette Odile, like your first experience doing that. And I guess maybe mostly Odette Odile, 
because I want to because of my follow up question. When did you first do it, and how did you feel about that oncoming performance? I think the first time I did it was twenty sixteen. I was very young, and it was my third full length I'd ever done. And I, f I was put with a very um, like senior principal artist who was, knew what he was doing. And so I was very lucky to have a partner who really helped me through all of it. But that was a great experience. Do you feel like you've grown in the role since then? Oh, yeah. I think I was young and so you don't think about all the little details you know you just get through it um so yes i definitely have i've learned to think of the whole picture <laughs> yeah and getting through it is part of, it is is part of the journey though you know there's some really good things about that too being older and doing it is good too <laughs> um i did ben's version the first time um Oh, and that was a hard one because um, it was a 9-11 and we premiered Swan Lake that weekend. <laughs> I thought, how am I going to do this ballet? <laughs> and I remember Armando playing our national anthem and I'm in the wings going, how am I going to get through this? So it has an emotional, um, it resonates with me that way. Um, and on top of that, the week prior, I remember, my partner gets injured, so I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be opening night of Swan like my first debut, and he gets injured. I'm like ah, <laughs> um, but because of 9/11, Carlos Acosta was stuck here in Houston. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so there's some really yeah, there's a silver lining there, and so he was supposed to do the second weekend with Lauren. Um, but he was stuck here. He was supposed to go back to Dubai and perform, and then come back in the second weekend. So we got to work, and I'll never forget him in the wings for my, my debut is Mimi. I make you look beautiful. <laughs> so, and he did. I mean, I, I felt it. He was, he was back. He was behind me. But then I thought, well, I got this too. <laughs> you did your first Swan Lake with Carlos I Acosta? I sure did. I had a lot of firsts with Carlos. I got, I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> That's amazing. It was hard. It was hard after him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now that you both have done multiple versions and multiple times you've had a, a chance at this, what, what's your advice to somebody who is about to have their first Odette Odile? Can I can speak to one, one thing when you're, when you're learning one version and you have to do another version. Because that music is so embedded in you and that default of the first time you ever did it, um, I don't know about you if you had the same experience, but in the creation process for, for Stanton's version, I had the hardest time getting steps, ideas out of my head. I had to wipe it clean. Every, Every rehearsal I came to, and I heard that music, I was like, I, I know a step to that. Right? It's so integral, that music, and I, and I had to like wipe it clean and start fresh, a fresh you know, sheet of paper, and start over with learning a, a new ballet from its very beginning. So I guess if you're coming to something for the first time, it might be a little bit easier. Like I, I don't know how Carlos did it, because he did like five Swan Lakes. I mean, how do you remember what to do? Do you go right or left? Come on. Um, but he did. He kept it in his head. I don't know how he did it. Um, so I, I think the first time you come to Swan Lake, um, everything builds upon everything else in life, right? So those foundational, that taking the bar and doing a plie, that's setting you up in some way and you did like a few roles prior to Swan Lake, so usually that's the case, and you'll have a, another big ballet that you've done, or maybe you just do a pas de deux, and that builds, and so then you can grow and learn from your experiences. 
And performing is the best way to do that. Um, I think, if anything, I regret is not having more shows of doing it. Because that's when you can kind of uh, have a little improv and, and feel, have more play with it and um, explore yourself more. And as you're learning these roles, you start to know a little bit more about yourself and how, how you think. And, how, and, and that goes into your characters and it just develops you as a, as a full artist. So I think you're always, you're always prepared. And you have to trust the people that are you know, in front of you, um, seeing you every day, that they can guide you and get you there. I think that's helpful when you have a good staff. That's, we ha I had Georgina Parkinson. Pardon? Uh, yeah. She came and did a lot of coaching for that, uh, for Stanton's version. So you, you look to the people that have done it prior to you that can offer insight. Um, I think that helps. If, I mean, you are one of those people now, Becky Ann. So if someone, if someone, I mean, I don't know, if you have some people doing it for the first time, I mean, yeah, do you, what would you? I, I would say take every entrance as its own. Don't look at the whole ballet before you start. Literally just think about the entrance that you're about to do and take it as it is and then just move on. Because if you look at what all you have to do that night, it's gonna be overwhelming. So to be able to enjoy each entrance, I would say really just take it entrance by entrance. You able to do that? I mean, do, or were you able when you first started, or is it? I feel like I've just realized yeah. that. Yeah. So <laughs> um, that's something I like. I would say yesterday was one of our first full company run throughs or work throughs of the ballet together, and I realized I was like, this is going to go better for me if I don't look at oh we have three hours and I have to do Black Swan the next like. I needed to just separate everything and take it as is. And that's also if something doesn't go exactly how you want it to, you have another entrance. And in this ballet, another character. That was somebody else. Yeah, that wasn't me, that was Odette. All right, we have time for a few questions. Um, I'm going to let Beck Ann know that in this place we like to repeat questions just to make sure everybody, since it's your first one. Go ahead, sir. So the question is about um, how, uh, how does the school actually prepare students for um, having to, to, to tackle roles in a full length that are funny and dramatic and con have conflict? And I would say um, what I say to students who are considering coming to Houston Ballet is that what distinguishes us as a school is the sheer amount of performance training that our dancers get. Because the job of a professional dancer is to put on performances. So you can, I mean, it's very important to be in the class and do lots and lots of classes and learn all the skills and technique and, but actually the, the opportunity to perform roles that in, in, as a student that you probably won't again get to do for quite a while as a professional dancer gives you the performing chops, the acting chops, the relating to another person on stage chops, the getting over your fear um, of, of tackling something as uh, big as Odette Odile. Um, we don't do a full length Swan Lake, but they get a chance to really explore the different characters so that when their time comes, they'll be ready. Yeah. Is there something about the music or about Stanton's particular vocabulary or steps that lends itself to a taller body frame? The question is about stature. As Mimi said, both Beck Ann and Mimi are, are taller Odette Odiles. Is there something about the music or Stanton's choreography specifically that lends itself to taller dancers? I just wonder if he prefer, like thinks of a bird, a swan, as being a longer, taller creature. Uh, but there's also, not all the cast are tall. There are some shorter Odette Odiles. Um. I think a bird can be any size. 
I remember when we did Firebird with Kadelka, he wanted a, a, a smaller, petite, a parakeet kind of bird, right? Um, which is different than what you would think of as, you think of a swan queen, you just need to have a presence like a queen. So however he envisions the swan, she's a swan queen, she's the queen of the swans. Is she though, in this version? Let me think about it. But I also think, I mean, he created it, this particular one, he created on a tall, on a tall girl. And sometimes I always found when he choreographed something for a, a more petite dancer, it was harder for me um, to execute things as quickly as maybe someone who is more nimble and, and could maneuver quicker. Um, so maybe the languidness of a swan works for him. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to ask him. But good question. Yeah. The question is about what Mimi was saying of, of leaving her impression on the choreography. What's an example of something that you did well in the choreography process that, that made it into the ballet? Now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, I feel like I had a, a good relationship with audience and characterization. Like I, I think I, I tried to bridge that um, Swan, maiden, um, dichotomy. Because they, they are, I felt like I, that might have been some, one of my strengths, maybe, was to be able to uh, handle those characters um, in a way that were true. You know, like how would it be to, I feel like maybe he used me for that. And maybe because I am long, I, I can fill out music. <laughs> If he's running the lot, you know, they need more music. I can make something a little bit longer. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I was just grateful that I got the chance to, to be that, I guess, muse or be utilized in that way. Um, it was, it's always rewarding when you have that experience. That's a good question. So this question is specifically for Beck Ann. After listening to Mimi, are there any things that you're reflecting on and maybe going to try in rehearsal? Uh, well, what she said about how Act One as Odette were very internal and not out to the audience, I'm really going to try and think about that. I really liked that idea because I hadn't really thought about that. And then also that as a maiden, we still would have, being a swan every night, we wouldn't just be human, we would still have tendencies swan-like, you know, like we would ho probably hold our arms a little different. So I'm definitely going to take that and think that, think that and use that. <laughs> Is Santa's version the only version that where we see Odette versus the peasant girl? And were there any opinions about that in the ballet world? Some people love it, some people didn't like it. So the question is, is Stanton's the only version that has maidens in Odette and Odile appearing as people, as maidens? And I believe that is the truth. Um, I, I think that's correct. Um, um, most ballets start, though, at the very beginning where she's a girl, so that you can see that transformation into a swan. But other than that, I don't think there's another company. Cece, is there another company that does the maiden? No. <laughs> Right, and she gets transformed. But, but it wasn't that person. So Correct. Yeah, it could be someone else. But it was it was the, the lead who did that girl. It wasn't the lead who did that. So Cece's saying, agreeing with all of us that Stanton's is the only one that has this structure, um, but that in Ben's, or Ben's version, there was a, a representation of Odette early on, but it wasn't the same character, the same dancer who. I did that. I picked the flowers, though. Is it maybe he had another one later? I don't remember now. I'll have to go back and look at his archive. But I think the, I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing from these dancers and other Odette O'Deals from Houston Ballet that I've talked to that this, it, that 
they really appreciate this version because of the being able to find, really show the audience that she's, that there's a person captured inside of that bird. I mean, I think we all know it because it's a person actually dancing it, but there is this idea that, you know, we, we, we get to go on the journey of her becoming a swan as a audience member in a way that you don't get to usually if her first entrance is as a swan. Jean? I'm curious about whether you have a specific response to Rothbard. What is his influence on your characters in all the four iterations of this? So this question is about Rothbard. How do each of the four characters that these um, dancers have to portray, how do they each respond to Rothbard? As Odette, it's like a force. He has a force over you. It's not that he's you know, really touching us that much, but we feel his presence and it's a draw, like the force is pulling us towards him. Whereas with, I feel like, Odile, um, it's, we're more in contact and face-to-face -face and chatting more conversation, whereas with Odette, there's no conversation, it's just the force. And he, he utilizes, and Stanton use, utilizes the black and white swans um, in the core as well. So you have a real delineation between the white swans and the black swans. And the black swans, I feel like, are his minions, maybe, for lack of a better word. And then the white swans um, are the ones he has control over, right? Or maybe they're the younger ones. I, I don't know quite, however you think of it, how they turn, I don't know, they turn color, I don't know. Who knows, I'm talking about mythology, right? <laughs> make, make it whatever you want. But I, I, I think that, um, for, you know, it could, it's probably just pretty traumatic to be overpowered, right? And to be that vulnerable, I think it gives, gives Odette characterization to be vulnerable. She has to be more, so having that kind of character helps her to be the vulnerable and um, not likable, but you care for her, right? You wanna know what happens to her and, and, and you're with her in the story. Whereas, uh, you know, Odile is just as cunning as he is and whatever plot he has for evil in the world, ha ha ha, no, I'm just kidding. You know, it has that power over people, just power. And maybe destruction. All right. One more, one more, Sasha. Sasha's remembering, and everyone can go and do their research when they get home, that when she first saw the Kirabdu uh, Swan Lake in England, that there, it wasn't, there wasn't a tragic ending because in communist Russia you weren't allowed to do that. So that the, the, made it, the swans, sort of like the maybe the original Stanton version, there's, there's somewhat of a, uh, uh, not I wouldn't, happy is strong because Odette dies, but um, they're freed at least. In, the, in, the, in Stanton's original, it sounds like this one as well, in the original, that the, the, her death creates freedom for the rest of the swans. Um, yeah, yeah, the curse is broken, that's, yeah. Well, with that, we've broken a curse. We, please thank these wonderful panelists. <laughs>